Am I the asshole for leaving my party for beating cancer? I, 35M, am a very private person. I have no social media, don't want my wife, 32F, posting photos of me. Although I don't tell her not to, just don't ask her to post me. Celebrating Father's Day or my birthday, I don't like attention on me and prefer to keep things low-key whenever I can. So, keeping that in mind, I was diagnosed with an extremely curable type of skin cancer. It was caught very early on and I never felt scared for my life in any way, shape or form. I'm an engineer and I think analytically and wasn't scared with a diagnosis with a 0.03% fatality rate. Still, I told my wife of course, and she was terrified. We talked through it and told her my doctor was very optimistic and said we have caught it early on, etc. None of it seemed to help, but I tried. After a while, I told her that we shouldn't tell our kids, 5F and 7F. My wife wanted to tell them, but I was adamant about that, I'm not even sure they would understand what we're talking about. Reluctantly, she agreed not to. About a week later, I get a call from my dad, asking about my cancer. Turns out, my wife posted on Facebook about my cancer that morning. I called her and wasn't happy that she posted my business and his behind the, you didn't say I couldn't post it, just not to tell the kids, excuse. There is no way she would think I wanted that posted online, no matter what I said. So, she took it down and time went by. Very quickly, I was in remission with my skin cancer and my doctor told me, word for word, we don't like to say you're cured, but, you're cured, I told my wife and she was ecstatic. She told me she was worried all this time, I could tell, and glad we put this all behind us. I thought we could put this all behind us too. This weekend, I'm coming home on Friday. I see a lot of cars parked on the street, some in my driveway. I couldn't think of any birthdays or anniversaries I missed, but went in anyway. It was a party for my remission diagnosis. I was mortified at this, she's never done anything like this and we've talked about how I would hate a surprise party multiple times. I asked what this is for a said, I'm sorry, but I didn't know you planned this, I'm just coming back for some files and heading back to work. It was a lie. I gathered up some meaningless files in my office and said thanks to everyone for coming and left to go back to my office, messing around on my phone until everyone left. My wife knew I was lying and we fought that night and I told her I don't know what's gotten into her. But she knows I would never want this and she doesn't get to make a big deal out of something personal I never wanted to be public in the first place. We've been cold this whole week and my brother said I'm the asshole since I told him I just pretended to go to work. So, am I the asshole for not wanting to celebrate beating my cancer? Not the asshole your wife completely disregarded your feelings re personal privacy. She should take down the Facebook post immediately and apologize for ambushing you with the party. Not the asshole. Has she always had main character syndrome? Cuz it seems like she is trying to get attention by using your cancer diagnosis, remission. Your wife is a trauma vulture and a decidedly gross one at that. I hate Facebook and those that post shit like this on it even more. What's more, I'd never even dream of disrespecting my partner as blatantly as she has, thrice in this post alone. Not the asshole by a landslide, op. You handled this as graciously as one could given the circumstances. Well I don't like it either when someone spreads my diagnosis. I mean I don't have something life-threatening, it's MS but it's inappropriate to spread it when it doesn't concern your own health. Coworker talked about it to her best friend that doesn't work in our shop anymore. I was fuming. We ourselves decide who we tell and who we don't. We can't control PPL, but as your wife she should have the empathy and brain to know who and how you are and not overstep your boundaries. You are married for a while. She absolutely has to know that you hate attention. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. As an introvert, it feels like an ambush of privacy invasion. Not the asshole. She is the asshole for making your medical situation public against your wishes. Are there other boundaries she has ignored? Was she seeking collateral attention? Doing so is very selfish of her. Am I the asshole for refusing to wake my boyfriend up in the morning, which made him almost lose his job? So I, 25 female, have been with my boyfriend, 25 male, for almost a year, and during our entire relationship he has struggled with waking up in the morning because of his ADHD. He sleeps through all of his alarms, which usually means he is late for work. Sometimes it's only 10-15 minutes, but it can also stretch to one hour. His boss likes him and has given him plenty of chances, but yesterday he got his last warning that if he doesn't show up on time he will lose his job. We have had a couple of discussions, arguments about this over the last year because he believes it's my responsibility, as his girlfriend, to wake him up. But I don't. Despite me waking up from his alarms and being able to shove him out of bed, if need be, I don't think it's my responsibility. He is an adult, has known about his ADHD since he was a child, and should by now have found some method that works. Him making it my responsibility turns me into a caregiver, a mother, instead of a girlfriend. This doesn't mean I refuse to help him whatsoever.
I have done plenty of research to find alternative methods, but either it didn't work or he refuses to do it. And I do wake him when his alarms go off, but he decides to go back to sleep right after. Had he not done that, I would gladly wake him up every single day. And I know this is only my perspective, and is most likely not true from his, but when he decides to just go back to sleep it makes it seem like he doesn't want to try. Not to mention the fact that he is especially grumpy, angry in the mornings and have, on several occasions, yelled at me for both waking him up and for not waking him up. And I don't want to help if he is just going to get mad, even though I know he doesn't mean it. But when his boss gave him his last warning yesterday, I felt so much guilt. Because had I just woken him up and been persistent, he wouldn't be in this situation. So I am at an impasse. Is it my responsibility, am I in the wrong for not helping, or should he, as an adult, be able to do this by himself? Because I kinda feel like the AH, but also not. Edit. I feel like I should mention more to the reason I don't want to wake him up. It's not like I can't, since I'm already awake, but first of all this affects my day too. I can't go to sleep before him, because our bedroom doesn't have a door, small apartment, so if he's watching TV or gaming it keeps me awake. This means I don't get enough sleep either, so when I have to do uni work during the day, before I have work in the evenings, I zone out and usually fall asleep, physically can't keep my eyes open. Which is why I wish I could keep sleeping for an hour or so longer, without having to worry if he got up or not. But I also don't want this responsibility because I love him. I want him to be independent, and I know we're in a relationship and we're supposed to depend on each other. And we do. But I don't want him to depend on me to get him to work on time, or to keep his economy in check or anything that would turn his life upside down should we break up. I need to know he can take care of himself in case something happens. Edit 2. Not much of an update but I talked to him yesterday and he has come to the realization himself that it's not my responsibility. He felt that way because he felt like a failure for not being able to do it, so like a lot of you said it was easier to blame me. We did agree to try the wake up light so hopefully that will work. I am not breaking up with him. I love him and want to keep helping him. I made this post because I was unsure if I should have done more, or if the fact that he had taken no personal responsibility to make a change means I did all I could. He is well aware that he is the only one who can make a change. Neither I nor a psychologist can make that change for him. He hasn't until a couple years ago tried to genuinely take control so it makes sense that he's still finding methods that work. But I suggested both a psychologist and finding other people with the same diagnoses as him so he has someone to talk to. Hopefully we'll figure it out together. Of course I will be there for him, help him find methods, and be there if they fail. But making the effort to change is something he has to do himself. I apologize if it seemed like I was trying to make myself a victim as some of you pointed out. That was not my intention. I never know what type of info is vital so a lot more came out because of your comments and me not being good at describing to the degree that is needed means a lot goes unsaid and miscommunication happens. But thank you to everyone who came with advice and methods we can try, I really appreciate it. Not the asshole. If he was single, sleeping alone, he'd either found a way or be in same trouble anyway. Instead of owning his problem, he tried to make it yours and it backfired. Not the asshole, as a fellow ADH dur. I've been in the same situation before. He's 25 year and should have built up some routine regarding his sleep patterns and mornings. He cannot refuse alternative methods and then expect you to wake him up. One thing that has helped me waking up on time and with a fresh, clear head, is a wake-up light, from Philips, on full brightness. Those light up to room slowly, 30 milinutes before the alarm goes off and they trigger the right wakey-wakey hormones. This might, will be a disadvantage for you, but once he has a routine build up, he can experiment with the brightness. And put the alarm away from your bed, so that he has to stand up to disable it. I'm curious, does he ever complain about a cloudy or foggy mind? Not the asshole alarms and devices are manufactured to assist the hard of hearing and deaf to wake up. Your boyfriend had no excuse to wake up on his own. He needs to research devices that are available for people with ADHD to assist them waking up. We have had a couple of discussions, arguments about this over the last year because he believes it's my responsibility, as his girlfriend, to wake him up. Baloney. He needs to take ownership for his responsibilities. Hundreds of thousands of people with ADHD wake up and get to work on time me. If he lived alone he couldn't use you as an excuse. Not the asshole, it's not your responsibility. Should you break up tomorrow and move out he would have to get his own carcass out of bed on time. He's outsourcing what is his responsibility onto you simply because you have allowed it to happen. If he's not mature enough to maintain employment he's absolutely not mature enough for a relationship. Edit. Especially when he goes back to sleep once woken up. It's significant other disrespectful, not to mention throwing toddler tantrums at being woken, not woken. How unsexy. 
Millions of people have ADHD and have developed coping skills to get to where they need to be on time. Not the asshole. Honestly, you've been together less than a year, you're only 25, and he's parentifying you into being his mother and making sure he gets up. Plus he's verbally abusive if you do wake him, if you don't wake him. Why are you with him? Being single isn't that bad that you have to put up with this crap ex. Am I the asshole for refusing to babysit my niece after my sister didn't show up on time, again? My sister, 32F, and I, 28F, have a pretty good relationship overall, but there's one thing that keeps causing issues she's always late. Like, every single time I agree to babysit my niece, 3F, she'll say she'll be back by a certain time, but then she shows up an hour or more late with no real explanation. I get it things come up, especially when you're a parent. But this has been happening every time for months now. Last week was the final straw. She asked if I could babysit for just 3 hours so she could run errands. I agreed, and she was supposed to be back by 5 p.m. I had evening plans with friends and made it clear I needed to leave by 6 at the latest. Of course, 5 p.m. came and went with no sign of her. I called and texted, and she just replied, be there soon. She didn't show up until 7 p.m. I was beyond frustrated because I had to cancel my plans. When she finally arrived, I told her that I wasn't going to babysit anymore if she couldn't respect my time. She got defensive, saying I should be more understanding because she's a single mom and it's tough to manage everything on her own. I do feel bad, but at the same time, I feel like she's taking advantage of me. Now my parents are involved and think I should cut her some slack because family helps family. But I'm just tired of being taken for granted. Not the asshole I was a single mom for a decade and a half and I was never late to pick up my child. You know why? Because I really needed people to help so I didn't want to take advantage of them, even if that meant cutting my own activity short. She ruined your plans, there's no pass for that. Your parents can either babysit or pay for a babysitter. Don't let her do this to you again. If you don't put your foot down now this will happen forever. Not the asshole. Being a single parent is hard. Being respectful of other people's time is easy. No attempts to make amends either. If your parents want to help the family they could start by telling your sister to be more respectful of your time. Personal bug bear, do not be late. There are very few valid excuses for being late. I lost track of time, or, something came up, is simply not good enough. Not the asshole. Now my parents are involved and think I should cut her some slack because family helps family. You are helping family by babysitting, which in this case is more than they did. Her disrespect towards your time is rude and crude. Maybe if you don't accommodate her, she'll grow up and learn to be on time. Not the asshole. Her excuse makes no sense. She's not with the child when she's late so how does being a single mom make her two hours late when she's not actually wrangling a child? If family helps family, then she can damn well waste your parents' time instead of yours. You don't have to do favors for people who are inconsiderate of your time and effort. Not the asshole. You're not the asshole. She got defensive, saying I should be more understanding because she's a single mom and it's tough to manage everything on her own. Try telling that to a daycare center. Is the going rate for picking up the child late still a dollar a minute, or has that gone up like everything else? Now my parents are involved and think I should cut her some slack because family helps family. They're welcome to step up and be taken advantage of and disrespected. Am I the asshole for not giving my brother a share of my inheritance for his property taxes? When my mom passed, she left everything to my older brother, Jason. Jason never moved out of my mom's home. He never had anything more than part-time minimum wage jobs. My mom forgot about me or my sister and preferred Jason. It also meant she had minimal contact with her grandchildren when she favored him. My father, who lost that home in a divorce, said it wasn't fair that Jason inherited everything from my mom. My father suddenly passed away, and Jason was kept out of his will because my dad was still sour about what my mom did. Jason was shocked when he was left out of my dad's will. He said the property tax on my mom's house was late because he was planning to use the money from dad's inheritance, which was a dirty trick dad pulled on him. My sister Debbie already told Jason to get a fucking job, and maybe you will have the 7k by the time it's due. I'm also not giving Jason shit. It's how my dad wanted it. Jason was freaking out during the reading because he didn't get anything, and he's already going through most of my mom's money and hasn't worked in 5 years since her death. He called us all assholes and said he needed the money more than us. I'm sure this was the same line he used on my mom to get Debbie and me written out of my mom's will. Jason acts like he will fight the will. But my dad talked about how Jason got 100% of my mom's inheritance, he doesn't get anything. On top of my dad's insurance, Debbie and I are going to sell my dad's home, and hopefully, the market stays hot. I suggest to my brother that he do the same thing and take the money and downsize to a smaller apartment or home. My brother is ranting to anyone who will listen, calling us selfish assholes, 
and even setting up a GoFundMe for his taxes. Several family members have donated. My grandma, on my mom's side, has reached out to me to help him with the taxes, and I said no. My grandma said she is no longer going to leave Debbie and me anything now because of how we treated our brother, but I reminded my grandma that our mom, her daughter, started this, and no one threw a fit about it when mom died. Debbie had two small children then and could have used the money. I didn't see Debbie start a GoFundMe, and I don't remember you, grandma, calling Jason and asking him to give up part of his share for us. My grandma said it was a different situation, and I told her, not really. Wow, that's a lot of simmering resentment and passive-aggressive bequeathing. You are not the asshole. You and your sister seem to have become unwitting pawns in this unfortunate game, which is not a comfortable place to be. Jason, on the other hand, needs to grow up and take responsibility for his life. He said the property tax on my mom's house was late because he was planning to use the money from dad's inheritance. That is the single most telling statement in the post. He's banking on someone unexpectedly dying so that he can pay an ongoing, predictable financial obligation. That's wildly unrealistic and short-sighted. Don't count your chickens, y'all know? Not the asshole. Not the asshole Jason got a leg up five years ago, but instead of using it, he sat on his ass the whole time. He's an adult and has nothing to show for where that money went it didn't even go to paying the taxes on the home he was gifted. His bad decisions don't warrant an emergency on yours or Debbie's part. He still has options, he can sell his house, he can get a job, he can. Do what people everywhere do all the time. He's not hopeless, he's lazy. Not the asshole. I don't think this needs great elaboration. You were treated unfairly and he seems to be a lazy jerk who deserves what's coming to him. You are totally reasonable in saying, no. Not the asshole. Did Jason give you any of the inheritance left by y'all mom? No? Then Jason shouldn't be acting entitled. He wasn't willing to give you or Debbie anything then why should y'all help him out? Jason is a grown man. He can get the money himself by doing what every adult and teenager, 16 and up, do. Get a job. Not the asshole. Rules for thee, but not for me. It's hypocritical for your grandma and brother to complain when your dad just gave the universe a hand in restoring balance. Tough luck. Grandmama can give her money to her destitute grandson right now instead of harassing you. That threat of cutting you out of her will is pretty empty, because she can always change her mind and cut you off later. Not the asshole. Why is this even a question? But grandmama showed her true colors, as well as the other flying monkeys.